Hey, how's it going? This is Chad Haig reporting from Southern India. I'd like to announce that my eighth book, Leftoid Psychology, is available now on Amazon in both paperback and Kindle editions. Kindle just $2.99, paperback just $6.80. The book is about 140 pages and is meant to be short, cheap, but also fun. This is maybe in contrast, I guess you could say, with the longer, more academic-ish works I um, had written in, say, 2020. Um, the strategy in 2021, which really was the year that this book was written, along with Social Justice Madness. They were no, originally one book, and then they branched off into two different books, one of them dealing with um, the problem of SJWism from more of the peak oil slash uh, deep ecology perspective. That was Social Justice Madness, released about a year ago, and this one dealing with it more from the strictly technological perspective, the more Kaczynski and slash Ellulian perspective, that became leftoid psychology, although they were originally one single book. Um, so the strategy in 2021 um, was, to try to focus more on having it be short and humorous and you know let's have fun with the ridiculousness of it because honestly you can't talk about what goes on on the SJW movement right now um, without just bursting out laughing out loud unless you're being paid a lot of money to pretend not to see the ridiculousness to keep a straight face to actually join in with the uh, religious uh, piety which you know in other um, theocratic nations you expect for the traditional religions you have to show that piety um, as a matter of uh, as a, a matter of uh, just being a good citizen who escapes punishment well we have that same um, problem in the West only with the pseudo religion of SJWism and if you're outside of that power structure um, and able to uh, blaspheme against it you can have a lot of fun um, but of course that is a, a privilege which uh, you know um, so few people I think are able to to uh, to have access to out in the public that um, you have to go into one of these forbidden venues like the inside of a book like this one to to uh to do that i think so that was kind of the point of making this book was precisely to have fun with something which um at this point has just gone so far beyond um the point of being a caricature of itself that it's just completely inconceivable that anybody can actually take their own nonsense seriously who's a part of that of course the the financial interest um and the technological requirement to, um, you know, gamble on uh, speculating on the stock value of various breeds of intersectionality at a time when the global technological system requires that you don't actually develop any skills or talent or labor um, of your own. Um, that's what's really going on. But of course, it's one of those genuinely forbidden topics, which, you know, enormously controversial, but something which still has to be talked about today. And that's what I tried to do in this book. So what makes um, leftoids psychology different from social justice madness well um, once again in social justice madness we were dealing with it more from the peak oil perspective the idea that the essence of sjwism simply is the current which is the countersense object of um, an absolute value like it's absolute that there's 68 genders well until we make it 69 okay um, or it's absolute that it's lgbq whatever until we change the ordering of the, the sequence of letters and then um, the next one is also just as absolute but of course it's also going to change because what's really going on there is simply the uh, political function of um, shielding a uh, class of elites from criticism and also redirecting disproportionate amount of fossil fuel based resources to them simply because they've already been grandfathered into some system where knowing this nonsense is literally their jobs. The PC update in both senses of the term um, doesn't get sent to everybody. It just gets sent to the same group of elites who are already privileged and will stay that way because the rest of the population will find out far too late that, oh, we don't use that term anymore. Okay, so that was the point in social justice mass well leftoid psychology differs from that by well on one hand also dealing with the counter sense object but kind of the ultimate one which is the um human leftoid itself which um Kaczynski defined as um, a, not an, you know, any group of individuals Le leftism is not an ideology it is rather a psychological type which can be reliably identified on the basis of just two structural features. Those are over-socialization, or the tendency to do exactly as society demands, even while claiming to be rebelling against it, um, 
And the other one is feelings of inferiority, which is a type of self-resentment, which inevitably has to find an outlet in um, employing uh, uh, hostile uh, methods for their own sake. Even while you're trying to, you're fighting for peace, but you still insist that you have to fight for it. And that's just because you have these feelings of self-resentment as a result of the over-socialization, okay? And it becomes a positive feedback loop where you redirect those into fighting for even more over-socialization by, in reality, fighting to advance the interests of the technological system, largely through linguistifying what had already been the case on a sort of abstract level of organization and rationalization. Let's keep in mind Jacques Ellul's definition of technique, not as physical machineries, we, or rather technology is not just physical machineries, we usually think rather technology is technique or the type of abstract systematic organization and rationalization which has to precede the instantiation in any one concrete um, machine within that system, even if it's the human machine of the leftoid who um, advances the system's neatest trick precisely because they suffer from that um, domination by technology. So we, um, I think we had to have a book length meditation on this because of the ambiguity of the term um, leftism in uh, Kaczynski's writings. On the one hand, we understand it to be the human psychological type, which perhaps you could argue um, on the level of thinking of the brain as something of a biological machine which comes to embody these um, features that are uniquely useful to the global technological system for the reasons I just mentioned. But um, on the other hand, that seems to refer to the linguistifications which these people promote. Because let's keep in mind, under over-socialization, you're not really able to do anything more concrete than kind of um, um, play the game of uh, being more up-to-date in the way that you use language than others and then punishing them for not being as up-to-date, right? We had this problem in 2015 that even the people who were trying to be politically correct by celebrating that um, we had um, um, uh, gay marriage uh, legalized um, were um, bullied, okay? They were punished because, oh, no, no, it's not just... <laughs> gay marriage which has been legalized it's all the other varieties of non-binary relationships which have also been and you're really the bigot because you don't know uh, you're still thinking that it's just a strict binary of same sex with a bi just two different genders right you don't realize that they're 68 and they've also been liberated okay so this is the kind of ridiculousness which um you find in the a realm of abstraction okay which um, somebody could only be delving into if they've been over socialized by technology to the point that they can't do anything except peddle those abstractions. But we have to think about those as, in a certain sense, a type of leftism themselves. But we have to get to the root of the problem by thinking of the global technological system as itself already embodying these same structural features of kind of a first order over socialization, which is um, kind of a, a structural requirement for obedience for its own sake, unthinking obedience, okay? Not the kind of Habermasian uh, fiction of, uh, of a consensus where you, you use language correctly to communicate about it, and then you are led to agree uh, with what is objectively proven to be the case by this intersubjective agreement of other rational speakers. Now, that's really a myth. The kind of um, consensus that technology requires is one in which explicitly you do not think, but you still go along with what the global technological system had already decided to do. And therefore, you have to have a, a kind of a hierarchy, like I proposed in my video on um, Kaczynski's uh, the system's neatest trick last March, I think exa almost exactly a year ago, we have um, this first order um, leftism, which the uh, global technological system already is before anything else comes to be. And then uh, there's a, a structural isomorphism between that and the psychological type of the human leftist, but th the latter is kind of second order leftism, okay, and transitively borrows all of its uh, power from the first. And they have this uh, third order leftism, which is the linguistifications, which they use to translate all of that into a form which is itself kind of a, a social technology to make explicit what was before only implicit within the system and to um, traffic in symbols which can infect the maximum number of other minds within the human population 
with the mandate to become even more over socialized to develop even more feelings of inferiority basically you use these third order linguistifications to promote the interests of the first order technological system and to make the other people more like the ideal of a second order leftist as you say people who are more useful to the technological system so you have these three different hierarchies okay and um you, you three different elements within the hierarchy three different layers i should say and um it, i think it really deserved a book length project to examine how exactly this works so uh this is something i had a lot of fun with um we deal with prominent sjw's like um anita sarkeesian and Anna Kasparian and AOC and Ariana Grande, okay, and we also examine um, the uh, ridiculousness of SJWism, uh, not just on a, a negative level, but also offer something positive um, in contrast, which is the ideas, along with my own, of course, of, um, you know, of uh, Ted Kaczynski, Jacques Ellul, Julie Savola, Nati Linkola, and uh, the financial collapse theorist Jim Rickards. I use Rickards a lot more in this book, um, showing why UBI, for example, might sound nice as a linguistification. You get paid to be a consumer. Well, that sounds a lot better than getting paid to be a worker and then only using what money is left over to be a consumer. We're trying to uh, offer a better technology to get what we want sooner. Okay, it sounds more advanced, but what it really is, is the ecologically impossible object of universal automation. It's the countersense promise um, you know, that uh, you won't be able to work anymore. In other words, you must renounce even what little subjectivity you have left to be able to do some job within the social niche. Renounce that subjectivity, but keep consuming anyway and just trust us when we say the global technological system will always go out of its way to keep you alive even after you have lost any usefulness for it. So um, once again, this is uh, something which in a certain sense, um, I guess was was started as a series of YouTube videos. There was the one on Kaczynski's uh, Systems and his Trick. There was also the video on a philosophy of Anita Sarkeesian back in 2020, where I had this little chart saying, okay, so if, if you have discussion of Sarkeesian banned from a venue for anonymous discourse on forbidden topics, which kind of is the opposite of Twitter, because on Twitter, you know, you have to have a registered account and there's content moderators who basically make sure that what gets discussed there, or rather um, the way that people discuss things will be in accord with the kind of... Um, um, SJWism, which merely reiterates what the global technological system is already doing. And if you deviate too much from that, we can ban you as hate and misinformation. So we have this um, uh, contrast between that and a forbidden um, venue where everything is anonymous. But what happens when Sarkeesian is removed from that? Is that the double negation of Marx and Hegel? Or is that rather the grammatical double negation which takes you back to Twitter? That's kind of admittedly kind of a, a convoluted and abstract thing to think about, but it's still well worth it, I think. Um, and it is kind of where this began back in 2020. This was really the longest book that it took me to finish um, in a sense that I really started the manuscript back in uh, January of 2020 and now in March 2022 it's finally going out to print um, so it was over two years now obviously I, I finished like three other books in the meantime um, uh, you know well over a thousand pages was released in the meantime uh, but still this was kind of the longest book to finish because um, you know the, uh, the 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 kinds of problems you have to deal with with regard to understanding what is going on here I think requires you to break out of the kinds of thought habits which um, the media will accustom you to um, to holding in a way that perhaps um, was uh, more so the case than the other works even so anyway it was a lot of fun to write this and I sincerely hope if you give it a chance it will be an enjoyable reading experience for you at any rate I look forward to uh, moving on to more videos discussions and books of course we'll be writing the uh, Hegel's Phenomenology of Spirit Reader's Guide as um, I'll be publishing it as a book in which of course I'll go back and add a lot more to it fine-tune it um, It will consult some more secondary literature But that will be coming soon within a few months and of course the philosophy of John Michael Greer also So thank you everybody who supported the channel